Hi, this is Bill for SparkyChannel.com and it's house renovation time. So come on in, let's fix her up. Today I'm gonna to be changing out this old switch. It is in a bathroom and if you turn it on, it turns on both the light above the vanity and it turns on the bath fan at the same time. You don't have any choice as to whether you want just the fan on or just the light on, you know? So it's uh, limited in what it can do. It just turns both off or both on. So I'm going to be using one of these two switches to replace it. This is a Leviton Decora specification grade switch. And it's just good. It would just be a straight change out. This is a Leviton two switches. And what it's used for is if I have enough wires in here, which I'll have to check it out. I don't I have no idea. If I have enough wires in here, I'll be able to put the vanity light on one switch, which I would like it to be the upper switch. And I'll put the fan on the lower switch. So that would be a nice upgrade if I'm able to do this. If not, it's still going to be a nice upgrade just putting on the Decora Plus switch. I've turned my fluke voltage detector on and we see that it is hot. And in fact, we've also just found out that this is the hot wire right here. And this is the load wire. So this is the what we call the line wire, the wire that brings electricity into this box. And this is the load wire, which is the wire that takes the energy and delivers it to the light and the bath fan. So line, load. The next thing to do is to find which circuit breaker controls this light and fan and turn it off. So this is my ideal circuit breaker finder kit and this is the receiver and this is the transmitter. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug an adapter into the transmitter and then I'm gonna plug another adapter into that. I'm going to screw this right into the light like that. Now I'm going to turn the switch on and I'm going to the main panel with my receiver. First I'm going to turn the receiver on just like that and the red and the green light come on. I'm going to go over all the circuit breakers for relative strength. Now I'm going to go over it one more time. There it is right there. Press that and turn it off. And this is a 15 amp circuit breaker. We see that the fan and the light are off with the switch on. So that's one indicator that our electricity is indeed off. Also, I'll turn my fluke voltage detector on and do a double check to make sure that all the electricity is off. You want to clean out these these old flathead screws a little bit and you put your flathead screwdriver in there or screw it out okay so those are out and let's see what we got here okay now this was the hot wire remember we tested that originally with the voltage detector and this is a hot wire right here that's what we call the line wire these would be the load wires. So it looks to me like I'm gonna have enough wires to do my double switch. I think that someone just added, this is some newer Romex right here. I'm going to here. It looks like someone just added a piece of Romex that probably goes to the fan. That was probably added you know, this is a 1960 house, so it's probably added somewhere between uh, 2019, which it is right now, and uh, 1960, somewhere in there. So, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to go ahead and take this off. And just, just spin it off. I'll take this one off. Okay. okay, so let's take this wire and we test it out. This one was hot even with the switch off. That's how I know that it's the line wire. So this is 
the one that brings the energy into the box. And don't be fooled on an older house. Just because it's white doesn't mean, doesn't mean it's a neutral wire. Because back before 2011, you could run a white wire to a switch and have it be part of the switch wiring not being a neutral. Please see my video, 2020 NEC article 404.2C, neutrals in switch boxes with examples and new 2020 exceptions for more information about these neutrals in the switch boxes. But you had to designate it. You had to color code it black or red. And they didn't. It's just a white wire. So that be, can be quite confusing. And there's something that you have to deal with and in 1960s wiring. You, you just need to know that. So this one here, I would say goes to the fan right there. And this one here uh, is really a, a original 1960 wire that goes to the light. So we got the line wire, the fan, and the light. And back here in the back, we got, uh, what do we got? Well, we got a neutral wire. I've done some marking here. I have marked the uh, line wire with some black tape. That's our hot, that's the wire that's hot all the time. And this is the fan load wire. And this is the light load wire. So we've got hot, fan, light. And neutral, we've got a neutral here. And back in the back, I am seeing a ground wire. You'll be amazed sometimes when you work on houses from the 1960s and 50s and what you'll find. But there's a ground wire connected to the metal box. Uh, this era of house frequently has metal boxes in the kitchen and the baths. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and vacuum this out. Okay, so here's a ground wire. I don't know if it works as a ground or not. I'm going to take this out. Okay, using a self-tapper like this is very much against code. You're supposed to use a green grounding screw. So what I'd like to do is make a test and find out if this ground wire actually works as a ground. I've turned the circuit breaker on for a test. And I have my red lead of my Fluke Electrician's meter on the line wire. That's the wire that's hot all the time. And I have my black lead on the ground wire. And you see it is reading, my meter is reading 121.2 uh, volts AC. So that shows me that this ground wire is an excellent return path to the main panel. Otherwise we wouldn't be getting 121.3 volts AC. So we have a good ground here. Now I've turned the circuit breaker off, but I still have my meter on and it is reading zero volts AC. So that means that the electricity is off. And then I can take the, my fluke voltage detector and double check all the different wires. So there's, there's two checks right there that the uh, electricity is indeed off. I've got a 964 drill bit. I'm gonna bore out this hole and it's already in here. Okay, and now okay, this is a 1032 tap. Okay, keep it nice and straight. Okay, put this right in here. So now we have a bonding wire that will bond the metal box to the grounding system of the house. This is a three connector Wago lever nut. And I'm going to get the grounds together here. I'll put the one that, bound, that bonds the metal box in here. Just push it in, click it down. Then this is a pigtail that I've made up, which will go to the switch. Okay, so now we're gonna take and put the grounds back into the back of the box.
Okay, and here's our neutral, which we will also take and put into the back of the box. Here's our double switch, and we're going to put the ground wire in a clockwise manner around our green terminal. We're going to crimp it and tighten it down securely. These two black terminals are connected by this brass piece right here. If we wanted to make them separate, we could just take and, and uh, go back and forth, back and forth with our pliers and break that piece off but uh, we want them connected together. So we have power to both the switch and the fan now. So I'm going to tighten up the power to the black common terminal. And I'm just gonna tighten this one down to lessen the chance of it hitting the metal of the box or something and making it short. Okay, now you have to kind of think ahead as to which you want on which switch. Okay, so that's around there in a clockwise manner. Tighten it down securely. Okay, so here's the load wire that goes to the fan. And I'm going to put that around the terminal in a clockwise manner. And tighten it down securely. So that's the fan and that's the light. We want them the way around so it's like this. Okay. I'm going to go around the device with black electrician's tape for safety. Now we're going to put the faceplate on. I have turned the circuit breaker on and remember I said I wanted to put the light on the top switch well let's check it out there it is the lights on the top switch and I wanted to put the fan on the bottom switch there's the fan going there it is I'm going to turn the fan off Turn the light off, turn the light on, turn the fan on, just the fan, just the light. There you go. Because the light and the fan were in different locations, I knew that I had a good chance of finding separate cables running from the light to the switch and from the fan to the switch, which made the separate switching possible. If the fan and the light were in the same location, the odds would be good that a cable with only one hot conductor would be running from the light-fan combo to the switch. In that case, the cable with just one hot conductor would have to be replaced with a cable that has two hot conductors. I have a video on this situation, which I'll put a link for in my video description. To review, I checked the switch in the off position with my voltage detector and found the line wire. Then I turned the breaker off, took out the switch, and found two load wires. I made an educated guess that the newer load wire went to the fan and the older load wire went to the light, which turned out to be correct. I removed an illegal self-tapper screw and checked the ground wire to find that it was good. I tapped a 1032 thread into the metal box and attached a proper grounding pigtail to bond the metal box. I got the grounds together with a wire connector and attached a ground to the new double switch. I attached the light load wire to the top switch and the fan load wire to the bottom switch. Now, let's meet the stars of the show, all of which you can find links for in my video description. The Fluke Voltage Detector and the Fluke 117 Electrician's Meter. The new DeWalt Atomic Drill Driver Set. The Ideal Circuit Breaker Finder Kit, which includes an excellent outlet tester. Wago Lever Nuts in the 2, 3, and 5 connector sizes, as well as the variety packs. Kinepex electrical installation pliers, Weha 1000 volt insulated screwdrivers, 
Leviton specification grade double switch, which is a higher grade than general purpose switches. Look for the spec grade marking on these switches as well as this symbol so that you know you're using a quality device. And last but not least, ideal grounding pigtails, which include a proper 1032 grounding screw. Thanks. I hope this video was helpful. Yeah.